All right, welcome back to episode number five of my 3D printer slash mill combo build series. Uh, I finally got a hold of this E3D hot end. Uh, I got it from a company called Philostruder that's a U.S. distributor. Uh, it came in right around 80 bucks plus shipping. I was actually super impressed that I ordered it on a, uh, I think a Wednesday night, and I had it on Saturday, which was pretty impressive. I got a tracking number within minutes. It was it was pretty awesome. So props to them for getting that out to me fast, although I wasn't in a super hurry, but it's good to have it. Now I'm ready to get started. So I did kind of make a last minute decision and switch to this E3D hot end from the J-Head. I thought oh, some people every now and then accidentally overheat and cook their PTFE sleeving, and it's just, I think it, more than anything, it's just a pain to source it. And a lot of people have good reviews and good, good luck with this guy. So I'm going to give it a shot and uh, see if it all works. I didn't do an unboxing on this one because I just honestly didn't feel like it, but uh, here's essentially what it came with. You know, the main heat sink piece. This is a heater block, aluminum. A couple of, uh, they call them boot lace ferrules, little crimp, crimp terms. Get to that in a minute. 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which actually looks a lot smaller than I thought it would look. Uh, this is my Swiss Army for scale, but. Uh, this, I don't remember what they call this, but it's a thingamajigger that goes in to the bottom here that connects the uh, heater block in. And then it comes actually with this 3D printed piece. It just slides right on there and kind of hangs on. Um, I hope it gets a little tighter when I put the screws in, but it's kind of neat. came with a fan and everything, so uh, I didn't have to source that externally, which made me pretty happy. Now one thing, I've already started making modifications and I haven't even used this thing, but... Um, this thing is is just ridiculous. I mean, it, this is the uh, thermistor that tells you how hot or not hot your uh, hot end is. And it's going to close the loop around that little guy. Um, the thing is, like, small. It's incredibly small. And these little wires are like little hairs. But what I don't like about it specifically, let's get my pointer out here, is that you have to do a bit of insulation with this... Uh, this tape that they send with it. That's high temp tape, cap Kapton tape. Um, and so you have to be real careful and you jam it in the little hole. So I didn't really care for that. And luckily when I ordered my uh, my Aztec X3 Pro, I threw these guys on. They had them for like seven bucks for a pair of two of them. And I thought I'll just keep them for backups or use them for something. I thought it would be good to have so I didn't have to make a separate order for them. So these are uh, Epcos 100K uh, thermistors um, and they're a little bit larger I'll put it next to this one that came with the E3D a little bit larger but most importantly I mean, it's got this nice coating here but most importantly it has a sleeving which I would guess is PTFE it feels like it it's not which is a uh, Teflon it's, it's really slippery and such um, so that goes all the way into where it's covered up here with the uh, the black coating so I like that the actual um, I know Marlin has a table for, for both of these, so that's not going to be a problem. I checked the data sheet on both of them, and they both go up to 300C, so that should be pretty good. Um, I don't see any problems. Maybe I'm not saying do this upgrade or this change, but um, it's something I feel pretty comfortable doing. I don't think I'm going to have any trouble with it. So what I had to do, though, is drill this. Um, I started with just one hole here and kind of offset from center. And so I've had to drill that out that was just barely big enough for this little guy. Uh, drill him out to like 2.1 millimeters or so. Uh, I think I used a number 44 uh, drill bit to, to get this in because a 2 millimeter wouldn't quite fit without really jamming it in there. So it's kind of snug. I mean, it's, it is loose. It, it almost just fit, pressure fits right in, which I wish it did. But uh, So I'm going to glue those guys in with a little bit of... Uh, black RTV silicone. I have this out of my car stuff. I wish I had some of that red high temp stuff left over. This is good till 260C. I'm not going to probably go much over that ever, so uh, I'm just going to use the smallest bit and hold these guys in. They suggest you use this Kapton tape to hold them in, and I might, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't really care for this too much, and I think it looks kind of sloppy when it's all on there, so I may end up needing it to insulate this heat block a little bit, though, so... Um, Something to be careful about, you cannot really get away with soldering these together. So, um, 
the system actually came with this piece of wire and this is a high temp like oven style wire let me see if I can get it out of there of course I can't um, there we go and so it's it's braided and impregnated probably with something so you can't really get away with soldering these because it gets hot enough to actually melt the solder or potentially get close to melting the solder so that's where these little boot lace ferrules come in you put them on there and uh, it holds it on tight for you so um, this should do it you might wonder why I have two I don't think I mentioned that uh, the Marlin firmware actually supports redundant it's a little bit overkill because the Marlin firmware also uh, will notice when you go out of range. So if you're at like 500 uh, C, that's usually a wide open or, or short one. I can't remember which is which, but uh, if, if it's not a sane reading, it'll shut off your heater to keep it from running away and, and catching on fire or something. But what it doesn't protect in is if one of these guys falls out. So if you don't tape it in well enough and it's seeing ambient air, this thing potentially could just heat and heat and heat and never get hot and burn up your uh, PTFE that was in the other head or just, you know, general bad things. Is, it's not good. So I'm going to go ahead and make these redundant and let the software watch and it checks for uh, the differential between the two. And if it's greater than whatever your setting is, I think 10 degrees is default. So if it's greater than 10 degrees Celsius, it will uh, shut you down and tell you about it. So, um... You do need to keep this fan on all the time to cool this and keep it from uh, from burning up your mount. Although I am mounting to aluminum, so maybe that doesn't apply as much because I have a lot bigger heat sink just right off of this heat sink. So a lot of people go right into your extruder with this. So real quick, I'm going to do another video on my extruder at some point, but I'll get him into frame. This is the bottom of the extruder, so he'll mount right in there. Oh wait, whoops, here's the bottom. He should mount right in there with a little bit of cleanup and uh, this is the actual extruder mount, but I am going for Bowden, um, and when I get it on the, uh, the mount, I'll, I'll change the camera angle so you can see that a little bit better, but I have the parts for that as well. So moving on to the assembly, and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. So far from what I can tell, the E3D online documentation looks pretty darn good. Uh, so I'm gonna be following it in the background, um, but I'll walk you through what I do. So first, I'm going to put this guy in, run him all the way down until this is just flush here. Then you take the nozzle, run it in the other side. Didn't know I was going to be a hand model this evening. And so what they say in the documentation is to make sure that you have just the smallest gap here. So you butt the two together and right here there's a little bit of a gap. Let's see if you can see that. Uh, and I'll get into that later. I'm not actually sure why you do that yet but we'll, we'll find out here shortly. So move this stuff out of the way. I'm not using this wire. I'll explain that shortly. I'm not using this, although I am going to keep it around if I can find it. I think if I dropped it in the carpet, it'd be gone. So, that's it for that step. Moving on. So, unfortunately, the right tool for the job here, these feral crimpers, are captive around the wire, and I would have to run them all the way down the other side. I've got this crazy PTFE sleeved... Uh, thermal wire it's good to like 260 all day long so um, I'd really like to use it but it's really hard to work with it's super slippery it feels like it's wet all the time it's really weird but anyway I can go ahead and get away with some uh, some needle nose I think or at least see how good of a joint I get so first I'll feed on my heat shrink Then I will feed in the ferrule. Maybe. And I stripped a little bit off of those guys. So I'm going to get them in there and hopefully do a little bit of a loop back. So what they suggest is really doing a, a bend around on both of them, but. Um, I just hope my ferrules are stronger than the one, the little ones. OK, 
Okay, so I'm getting a pretty good grip on those, I think. I'll come back with some real pliers, I think, and finish that up. But that's the idea. Then I'll slide the heat shrink and uh, do that to the other side. And then I've got to be real careful with these because you know, I'll just tear this thing up real easily if I don't support this. So you'll see what I'll do here with that in a minute. All right, I got them both crimped pretty good. They're not going anywhere before this wire breaks, at least, so I feel okay about that. And I'll push my heat shrink into place. About like that is what I had in mind. Okay. And now just to make sure that they don't get pulled apart, I'm going to put one more on there. So I'm going to repeat that process for the next one and move along. So just to be perfectly clear, the original kit did come with this setup here. So they intended you to use their ferrules here and uh, connect up these two. So it did come with something and I, I'm assuming that by the time the heat gets out to the end of this little guy you can just re-solder up some uh, some standard wire. They didn't actually provide that wire because um, they don't have a clue how far it's got to go uh, to get to your temperature controller, but uh, that should be sufficient if you want to go with the stock thermistor. So I just want to make sure that I didn't, or make sure you know that I didn't do this because there wasn't sufficient stuff in the kit. Alright, so that's about the first seven steps of the uh, E3D manual. I skipped a few and changed a few, but that's pretty much uh, how it goes sometimes. Fortunately, it looks like my silicone has completely hardened on me, so let's see if there's any left in there. Alright, I'm back with some blue RTV silicone here. Uh, it says it's good to 260C. Hopefully I'll get to use a little bit more than just this before this bottle solids up. So I'm going to get just a smidgen on these thermistors actually and stick them in the block. So that'll just kind of snug them in there. Uh, it does it shouldn't insulate too much I don't think. So let me just get a little bit on there. Do them both at once. Why not? I want to go this way so that the slightly longer one goes towards the top. Aww. Push it down in there and uh, clean it up a little bit. Alright, well that did not go nearly as well as planned. I got this blue aqua fresh looking gasket maker all over the place, but that's alright. I think it's going to work. It's still a little wet. Actually, it's still really wet. I just hit it, but um, I'm going to see if I can get this hot end stuck in there at least. Uh, this is the actual... Oh no. That was the actual uh, heat cartridge. So, use the supplied set screw with an actual supplied Allen wrench, which is kind of nice. Go ahead and screw him right down in the back here. So this is a 12 volt heat cartridge, um, which is all they offered over at uh, Phyllis Struder where I bought the E3D hot end. And that's okay though, because the firmware can actually set, if I do decide I'm gonna run 24 volt, which is still kind of up in the air, but if I do decide to run 24 volts, then I'll be able to set the max PWM uh, down to 12 volts. So it still will run at 12 volts worth of power. So I just snug that guy up. I don't want to go cranking into it too hard because uh, you can dent the case on him and stuff and, and mess it up. So that looks good to me. And uh, probably give those guys a little while to skin over before I mess with it too much.